All right, so I've layered up two different cloud references. And you see how just by bringing in that cloud with its own shadow, I've already kind of separated out what was problematic in my silhouette. And that helps. And now when I go back to my silhouette layer, I can use the smudge tool. And now this little horn I can suggest as a little wisp that I'm kind of pulling away and pulling down from, right? And it's just like a little offshoot. Because remember, it just needs to suggest the creature. So smudge is a really good way to shape it too with, with the wind that's pulling. And of course, your erasers are always helpful at different opacities, but make sure you have a soft edge before you do low opacities. Okay, now we could also dodge and burn, but you have to be really subtle with it. So if I wanna add a little bit more shadow on the back here, I'm gonna take a low exposure, I'm gonna do just the midtones, and I'm gonna burn it and if I do too much, you're going to see it changes the color. It's taking it warmer and warmer. So then I might have to go into sponge tool and desaturate just that area a little bit. So I don't want that warmth, right? And then I might need to go to image adjustments and color balance and bring back a little bit of that. There we go. A little bit of that blue in the midtones. So Dodging and burning can be helpful. What happened there? But you want to be mindful about it. In, in all honesty, it's better to use clone stamping for that, which we'll do later. So if I want more shadow there, instead of burning it directly, what can I do? I can make a clone stamp layer on top of everything. Just like we did for our assignment two creature. So this, this layer, that clone stamp worked really well to kind of darken the edge. And all I do is on that clone stamp layer, I use the clone stamp tool. I can uh, go from all layers, but I can use a low opacity as long as I'm using a soft brush. And I can bring those shadows anywhere I want. It's nice to have a shadow to use. And because it's on its own layer, then I can smudge that internally, externally, you know, and really suggest my creature. And of course, I can erase away at low opacities as well. So all of these are good techniques to employ that give us edge variation. And by having a lot of overlap on these, it, it helps Okay, trying to suggest that horn maybe a little bit more strongly. So I'll smudge a little bit with all these soft textures. And you can overdo it with the smudge tool and it will leave kind of telltale little marks. So that's where clone stamp can come in as well. So if I go to the clone stamp layer, I can see, okay, maybe I want some of this as the horn. I target it there, and then I clone stamp it in. So we really are basically digitally painting, but we're just using clouds as our palette, as our paints, at whatever resolution we're comfortable with. And then pushing them back and forth with the eraser as though we were building them with, with bubbles in the bath. If you notice kind of color irregularities, remember you have control of that through adjustments, color balance. I'm going to add a little bit more yellow. Into, I think the shadows of this one. Yeah, that's helping. Yeah, that helps. All right, and don't be afraid of some hard edges. You can always take them down 
you need to and blend them in. But clouds are going to have some hard edges. The bigger they are, the harder their edges are. Okay, this tail doesn't quite make sense yet. Let's see if I can make that work with just the smudge tool, like I did with the horn. Kind of push it away. Kind of push it in. <laughs> and then erase away with these low opacities. Yeah, that looks a little bit more believable. And then maybe if I clone stamp a little on top of that. So add more cotton balls and then gently take away from the different layers. That can make sense as a cloud. So my top half is working pretty well. Can probably get away with softening a little bit of that hard edge stuff. So my top half's working pretty well. Now I need to worry about kind of the more problematic part, which are these columns and feet at the bottom. So let me soften these separations a little bit more with my low opacity soft edged eraser and really find kind of the bottom of the cloud to composite in. Try to really work against these hard edges. Use the uh, smudge tool. And I could clone stamp from the existing stuff, but that would all look kind of too much the same. So instead, I'm going to bring in more of those clouds. I wanted to have at least five clouds as reference, and this is why, so I can bring more in. Before I go too much further, I want to erase anything that kind of catches my eye as being too sharp right. before I composite stuff over it or too bright. So I have a good basis to bring in new reference. There we go, so pretty good. All right, now I'm going to save it. So we've done a lot, a lot of erasing, a lot of smudging, a lot of stuff. We're going to save it. And one thing you can check in Photoshop, if you go to Preferences and then Performance, you want to make sure you have enough history states that are being saved. The default is only 50. So when you open Photoshop, the default is to only save 50 steps, which is not very much when you're doing digital painting and clone stamping and erasing. So I like to save at least 500 steps. So right now it's at 100, so I'm going to move that up to 500. Now, the reason we don't max it out is because Photoshop already uses a ton of memory on the computer. But 500 seems to work pretty well for me. Within 500 steps, I realize if I'm going the wrong way, I need to, to go back, generally. Okay, so save, Command S. Now let's bring in some more clouds. And I think, okay, how can I deal with the main focal point of this, this hand, this foreground hand? Well, I want something a little softer. So these look like good clouds for that. Right in here. So before I used here, now I'm gonna use here. Even though it's from the same reference, they're different cloud parts I'm using. So I'm gonna get a big <laughs> chunk here, kind of soft edged, Command J it from my smart object layer and then delete the smart object layer. And then 100% soft edged, big eraser, we're building atmosphere, right? Just like a texture fill, just like anything else. Take away that hard edge. 
not leave any trace of it behind. Then I can use Command T and I can stretch this like cookie dough you know, over the area where that hand would be, right? And I can warp it and I can give it a slightly more interesting shape and I can kind of push it within my cookie cutter. Then I can use levels to darken or brighten it. I think I'm going to deepen the midtones a little bit and limit the highlights. Just a slight bit. Command Z will show you what you did. And then I need to adjust the color balance. Make it a little bit more in the blues and pinks in the midtones. A little bit less dirty. This is so subtle. And it's such good practice to do this on something with white balance, like a cloud. Now I can erase away from the edges at maybe a lower opacity. Reveal what was underneath. Give it a slightly more interesting shape. And then I can smudge. Let me see, what do I want to smudge? I think I want to smudge the hard edge layer behind it, which is this. Yes. So I've now protected myself enough that my smudge tool, yeah, it should work pretty well and shouldn't damage any pixels I want to keep. I can kind of push that edge back and forth, suggesting a cloud edge. It's funny, we don't think about clouds very much as artists, but they're often in the background of our images. And uh, I used to be uh, friends and would oil paint with um, someone named Dave Sellers in California who made his living doing bird paintings, like naturalistic wildlife paintings, and selling them at like Western art fairs and things. But he would participate in the duck stamp challenge that the U.S. Post Office has every year, where painters submit duck paintings. <laughs> and one trick that he showed me of the duck stamp challenge is to always have clouds behind the ducks that mimic the shape of the ducks. And so clouds and their shapes, they have kind of a psychological resonance in art. And because you're the painter or the digital artist, you can control every pixel, every image. If you look at a duck stamp, you'll notice that the clouds match the shapes of the ducks. So we're playing with some of those ideas here. All right. So now I've got a pretty strong foot there. Might erase away from it to suggest that finger, or maybe just use the smudge tool. There we go, that worked well. Just a separation in the cloud. And now for that background one, I don't need that to be as strong. I don't want those to look the same. So I want to find out what layers those are in. Mostly it's this one. I'm going to use the smudge tool and soften this. Pushing its edges back, and then erase away a little bit. And then very low opacity eraser, just to get a little mist. And then smudge from there. So this is the gestalt. We connect these feet with this creature, even though there's a break, right? That break's a little dark right now, and I'll use clone stamp to kind of fill that in. 